So still with the basics, and this one is going with say possibly one of the most important things in fishing in getting it right for the whole day itself. If we get this uh, element wrong, then the day's pretty much messed up, and that is plumbing up. I mean, something that's, it is really basic, but if you get it wrong, it can lead to a whole lot of problems later on in your session. So not something you want to do. And I'm going to go through today pretty much some of the really easy steps in making sure you do it right and the things that you're looking for just to make sure that things go as smoothly as possible. And first up is the plummet itself. Do you know what I mean? Really, really basic, nice cheap, cheap bit of kit that we all have plenty of. But again, some people choose the wrong plummet for the wrong situations. For me, it's about keeping my... Um, options as limited as possible and I go with pretty much one style of plummet which is these which are made by uh, a bloke called Mark Charnel who makes them for us. I mean a plummet I've been massively massively popular with for many many years and it's because of the flat base. I mean I love that big flat base that it has sort of a two-piece sort of size base and it just for me it gives me a real clear, real clear reading of what I'm feeling on the bottom. I mean you find that with clip-on plummets or um, really narrow base plummets they can be a little bit tricky to find out what's going on. So for me, these plummets, big, massive, lovely flat base. They stick where you want them, they tell you what's going on. Choosing the um, size-wise, again, keep things really simple. For all my fishing, and for 99% of everyone's fishing, if I'm completely honest, either a 20 or 30 gram plummet is gonna cover nearly all the situations you're faced with, which is what I've got in on in this case. So a 20 grammer, hooked on lovely there, ready to go to show you how to plumb it up. So we're going to whiz them out. So I'm not going to go into all the technical bits of plumbing on a slope. I mean, that's not what this is going to be about. Today, I just want the basics. Well, what I should have done is put my glasses on so I could actually see what I'm talking about. But let's see what happens anyway. So first thing is shipping out. Yeah, I'm going to reiterate this twice, the same point. I'm going to make the same point twice and show you why it can be bad in a minute. But what I don't want is to ship out with that plummet on the bottom bouncing it all over the place. I want to literally go to my spot, ship out to my spot with that plummet almost off the bottom, uh, off the water all the way out, but definitely off the bottom of the lake. Yeah. And then hold it and keep it still. Yeah. Biggest mistake I see is people shipping out, going to where they think they're going to go. The plummet's already on the bottom and they think the plumbing dead depth there. Yeah. They think, all oh, right, yeah, I'm miles off. It's because the, the rig's on a horrible angle. I'm going to show that more when I go across though. So what I want is that plummet right out water, yeah, have a look at it. So keep it on top of the water there, keep it still. Yeah, you can see that it's barely moving there. So I know when I drop it in, my rig is going to be pretty much vertical. It's going to be a nice straight line. And just lower it down nice and slow and get it to pretty much on the bottom. But don't let it whack into the bottom. Yeah, lower it really, really nice and slowly onto the bottom so you can get a nice reading. So I've done this one already. And what I'm trying to achieve, the first thing I want to know is dead depth. I mean, I want to set my rig at dead depth flipping neck 99 times out of a hundred no 95 times out of a hundred depending on the weather conditions if there's no wind i want my rig pretty much dead depth most of the time and by dead depth i don't mean so the bristles just showing i don't mean let me try and drop it down i don't mean plumbing up so it's like that yeah because if i plumb up like that i'm not dead depth because my rig's never going to be perfectly straight in the water i've said this many 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 times and your rig's going to be really unstable wafting all over the place Dead depth to ensure your bait stays still on a relatively calm day. Yeah, is as you lower it down, I want to see the bottom, bottom to bottom third of the body of my float with a nice elongated body like this one. So you can see there, when I hold a tight line, I drop it down, that's where it's hitting the bottom. Yeah, with a nice slow lower, because I know it's silty there, because it's a flat bottom when I'm plumbing up. There's a bit of silt, but with a nice slow lower, I mean, that is dead depth. That's how I'm achieving the same every time. And because my rig's straight, I'm finding the same thing every single time. Yeah, I know that I'm plumbing up to dead depth. Yeah, really, really simple. It's a bit of a hole over there where it does go a bit deeper. But I will show if I put it in too quick, like I did when I was demonstrating then, if you go too quick, you find yourself going into the silt. Yeah, which becomes a little bit tricky to determine the depth then. You can see that's gone down probably an inch to two. Yeah, so I may be have a little bit too much line on the bottom or not enough line to create a stationary rig. If I keep dropping my rig, see I'm getting that to really go under there because there's a bit of silt. So that's not what I want. That nice slow lower in just means that the plummet's light enough to sit on top of the silt and give me a nice gauge as to what the depth actually is. So really, really simple. And then what you will do, 
So I've spoke about this lots of times, to create that curve in your rig. It's the windier it is, the more you want that curve to be um, with your shot in actually on the day. And then really windy conditions, I'll just increase that plumbing so I might end up with the full body of my, uh, full length of my float. I mean, in really windy conditions, I might plumb up to that so I'm a float over depth or really, really windy conditions even more than that. But in most situations, you're never plumbing more than the bottom of your stem of your float. It's always going to be middle of the body, like I'm saying there, or above. So next, I want to whiz across and just show you that far bank in a little bit more detail, getting the depth that it is over there. So flat bottom, down the middle, really, really easy. But next, I just want to, I want to highlight that mistake of not loma rigging vertically, understanding it. So what you'll find here is if I plumb up to this area here, this is the bottom of the slope. I mean, massively, massively popular area, bottom of the slope to two thirds up the slope that people target on snake lakes all year. Do you know I mean, mega, mega productive area. But I see often looking down the canal, how poorly people plumb it up. It's, it's ridiculous pretty much. They're not getting the true readings, which leads, as I said, lots and lots of problems. So there I've got the bottom of the, bottom of the um, far bank slope is right there. If I lower a nice straight rig in, as I said, lift it nice and up and bring it down lovely and slowly so it stays straight. You can see there I'm dead depth. Yet yeah, the mistake I see now is because you've got to remember you're on a slope. It's no good just lifting your plummet a few inches off the bottom and shipping out. Because if I do that, I go from this angle to hopefully highlight it a bit more. If I ship out, keeping my plummet just off the bottom, yeah, I see it a lot that people think, oh, I'm just off bottom there, still that's about the same. But you lot will be able to see, hopefully, with the angle of the camera, that rig's on a massive, massive angle. Do you know what I mean? To me, it actually looks all right, especially without my glasses on. I can't see what's going on. So I'm thinking, oh yeah, there's a bit of a slope there, but I'm not far off bottom. We're actually true. If I don't move my pole, I mean, I'm not going to ship any further. If I actually lift that straight, yeah, so I've lifted it right off the bottom and lower it back in, you can see that's ridiculous. Yeah, you see how steep the slope is? And I'm actually, what, two foot probably over depth there. Same again, if I come back, drop it at the bottom of the slope. It's all the way back here, the bottom of the slope. There's the bottom of the slope. Again, if I were to just push it out that way, keep it just off the bottom, it looks good. Yeah, to me, it looks like I'm keeping things nice. Looks like I'm pulling up um, dead depth. The, rea the reality is I'm a million mile away, so always make sure that plummet's really, really high, almost to the surface of the water. Plonk it in, just like that. And that way you get a true reflection of the depth as you move across a lake, a canal, whatever it is that you're doing. And it's much easier to understand exactly what's going on instead of misplumbing and ending up not seeing any bites that you actually get. Hi, you lads. Very, very sorry to interrupt your video watching. How dare you? Quickly, if you haven't already noticed, we have managed to write a book, haven't we? Yes, we have, Which Jamie. Which is full of all our very bestest methods and features or whatever else we do on this wonderful subject of fishing. So if you haven't had a look already, go and have a look at winningways.shop and buy one for yourself.